is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter morning and welcome in the name of Jesus Christ to Easter worship at Fort Massey. My name is Sharon Valentine. My pronouns are she and her. I am the intentional interim minister here at Fort Massey in Halifax. Thank you for joining us today here in the sanctuary or wherever you are tuning in virtually. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us on Easter morning, April 9th, 2023, where everyone is welcome, needed, valued, and belongs. There is room for all. We will be celebrating Holy Communion today. If you are here in the sanctuary, you should have received bread and a grape as you came in this morning. If not, feel free to go grab some now. And if you are worshiping virtually with us, please have elements ready. Throughout Lent, we have been engaging in a series seeking honest questions for deeper faith. Who are you looking for? What are you looking for? Seeking the unexpected. Receive what God gives to each of us today. I invite Jenny to play some quiet music now as Lily and her helper come forward to light our candle here in the sanctuary. If you have a candle at home, I invite you to light it now as we all hold the light of Christ in our hearts. Today, we light this candle, celebrating God with us. Meet the unexpected, be surprised, feel the joy. Christ's light shines. We acknowledge the Mi'kmaq traditional territory and the unceded territories and treaties of the First Nations people of each person who is connecting with us wherever they are. The lands that we are privileged to work, live, play, pray and worship on. Land on which members and elders of local indigenous communities and their ancestors have been caretakers for many centuries. We offer thanks and deep gratitude for the First People's stewardship, wisdom of generations, and in humility continue to seek to learn to live into truth, reconciliation, and right relations. We come with grateful hearts, desiring to live in peace, friendship, and gratitude with all people. May it be so. And I invite you now to join me responsively in the call to worship. You will find the words printed in the bulletin as well as on the screen. What? are you looking for? What 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 are you looking for? Good news, come in, love is alive. And as we settle in to worship, we connect with the divine more deeply. However you name and understand the divine, seek that presence, that knowing. Be comfortable where you are, feeling your feet grounded with the earth beneath you. Let's just breathe together, welcoming the divine and feeling God's presence. So we breathe in, feeling that presence, and as we release, 
to just let go of tension and anything that is distracting us, pulling us away from sensing God. Let's breathe it in together and let it out into silence. God of resurrection. We confess that like a dog with a bone, we can run aimlessly. We can chase our tails, looking for things that provide answers to the suffering of the world, looking for comfort to our longest nights. You meet us in the darkness before dawn, but we mistake you for the gardener, holy comforter and friend. No matter how many times we lose sight of you, God, you never lose sight of us. We might spend our whole days seeking, but we are always found. Resurrecting God, we are open to the unexpected. We come with hope, seeking resilience and joy. Keep finding us. In gratitude and thanks, we pray in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. And as we prepare to sing, please sit or stand according to your comfort, knowing that we all rise in spirit. We lift our Easter songs to God. Let's join our voices and sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. Voices United, 155.
a Christ be with you. And I invite you all to share a sign of peace with those around you. Uh, welcome and happy Easter. Uh, my name is Burain Tabuma. Our thanks today to Jenny Trites, our music director, who's at the piano and organ this morning, to Jay Fraser and the choir, uh, to my beautiful wife, Clarissa Sitt, our scripture reader, uh, to Nancy Riggs, our usher, to Alison McDonald and Nancy Riggs, hosting our coffee and conversation in the lower hall after worship this morning, to the Jansen family doing tech this morning, and to Sankhya Noor, leading our Sunday school, and Lily Noor, offering nursery care. The announcements uh, were in Thursday's newsletter and today's bulletin. Here are some highlights. We offer thanks and celebration for the beautiful flowers adorning our sanctuary, and offer thanks to all who have taken part in providing and placing our special decorations. Please take a moment to read the dedications and also offer your personal thanks for loved ones you are remembering. We will keep the potted plants in our sanctuary as long as we can. We have 90 cut tulips adorning our sanctuary. Following worship, please come and take, please come and take some of the cut flowers so these tulips can be shared and bring some joy and celebrations in our homes. Our thanks to all who took part in our Maundy, in our Maundy Thursday service and meal. If you can stay, please come to the lower hall following worship for coffee and conversation today. We have a lot of treats to share. Please sign up to host coffee and conversation on the Tobin Street's bulletin board. Uh, we need people for April 16th, 23rd and the 30th. Uh, tomorrow is Easter Monday. The church is closed and there will be no craft and chat. Join Wednesday evening, that's April 12th, to help with the writing of our living faith story, which is needed before we can get approval from Region 15 to begin our search. We will meet at 7.30 on Sharon's Zoom. All are welcome. All men are invited to join in the, ne in the next men's breakfast, which is, this Thursday, which is this Friday at 9.30 in the morning. Ian has booked tables at Smitty's Restaurant on Lacewood. Contact Ian with any questions. Our moderator, the Right Reverend Carmen Lansdowne, will be at Woodlawn United Church in Dartmouth uh, next Saturday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are all invited. Please join us at the Central Library next Sunday, April 16th, for a children's concert and story time featuring a rendition of Peter and the Wolf, accompanied by a symphony orchestra. Monday, April 17th, Anyone interested in helping develop some survey questions for our congregation is, is asked to join the transition team meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Sharon Zoom. Note our meeting is starting half an hour earlier than we usually meet. All are welcome. Happy belated birthday to Lorraine McCaskill on April 4th and Linda Dean and David Griffiths on April 8th. Happy birthday to Nala Rose McDonald on April 10th. Blessings and our best wishes to all who are celebrating birthdays, anniversaries or other celebrations this week. Please join together, standing according to your comfort, as we say our new creed, our affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, 
to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, to crucify and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. On this Easter day, as we grow even closer to the beginnings of the search for our Fort Massey permanent minister, we as a community of faith are invited to share our excitement, energy, and enthusiasm celebrating our faith at Fort Massey. You saw in the bulletin today our vision statement. It is a draft and the affirming committee has been busy with its crafting. You might notice there is a listing of many descriptors, which some people might call labels. The affirming initiative requires that we have certain labels in there, and we have done our best to be as expansive as possible to be inclusive. It is now your turn to reflect on your thinking if you feel that this visioning reflects us. While affirming places intentional focus on the 2S LGBTQIA plus community, which we honor and support people identified as 2S LGBTQIA plus and as allies, our radical welcome and hospitality, our commitment to love one another, is reflected in God's expansive love, love for everyone, and growing in our understanding of who our neighbor is. We hope that all who are seeking spiritual expression, who come to Fort Massey, will find this a wonderful place to call home and be part of our faith family. Please take a look at the working statement. We do need your input as a congregation. All suggestions are most welcome. So just continue to feel free to be the wordsmithers to provide some input. And we'd like that by April 24th. We want to ensure that all voices have had an opportunity for input. It is both a work in process and progress. We are also excited to announce that a congregational meeting is tentatively scheduled for April 23rd. So plan to be here two weeks from now to provide feedback, not only for the vision statement, but for the living faith story and the faith profile. Following that meeting, it is hoped that our regional council will approve our work and that will then move us officially into search status for the permanent minister that we hope to welcome here on January 1st, 2024. As we look at the discipleship flower, may our hearts be glad with all the ways that we give and we receive. The stone has been rolled away. Hope is unleashed in the world. Share it. Wherever you are, God appears. Whatever you are going through, God is with you. We have so many ways that we give and we receive. We give of our time, our energy, our skills and strengths, our vulnerability and our risk taking. While we cannot take up offering as we did before COVID, donations can be placed in our offering plates by the font as you exit towards Tobin Street or in the aisle as you exit to Queen Street. Offerings can be made by e-transfer, checks or envelopes, by car, recognizing our giving and our receiving. And as you are uncomfortable, I invite you to imagine or pretend to hold the offering plate. As we give, we receive. The offering will now be received. <coughs>
gracious and loving God. May these gifts open the gates of joy and welcome all of our unexpected gifts we offer on this joyous morning that they may bring peace like a river, light to those in the shadows, comfort to all who mourn, and to all those longing for change, to all those who longer and thirst your holy presence today and every day. Bless us as you bless these gifts. May we and all our offerings bear the gifts of Alleluia. Alleluia, O oh God, that you use us to share the message of your love here and throughout our world. We pray in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our time for the young and the young at heart. I'm going to invite Cliff to share a story with us, and it is called Twas the Morning of Easter by Gwyneth Nellis. And you will find Cliff holding the book, but the pictures are also on the screen. Was the morning of Easter before the sun rose. Two guards on a hillside were just trying to doze. You see, Jesus had died only three days before. A huge stone had been placed to seal the cave door. The disciples were sleeping, but tossed in their beds. As visions of danger swirled round in their heads, would they be arrested and led away too? Without Jesus, their leader, what would they do? In her small, quiet home, not too far away, Jesus' friend Mary was planning the day. She would go to the cave with perfume and spice in hopes that her gift would make Jesus smell nice. The sun through the trees was just starting to peep at the guards on the hill who were now fast asleep, when all of a sudden there came an earthquake and the rocks and the trees all started to shake. The guards jumped in fright and fell straight to the floor as the stone rolled away and unsealed the door. Then Mary arrived and crept up to the, up, crept up to the cave. She had to see Jesus. She had to be brave. But the cave was now empty. He just wasn't there. Mary sat down and wept, and her cries filled the air. But suddenly Mary heard someone behind. Dear woman, who is it that you hope to find? Mary jumped and turned round, so confused and afraid. Was this man the gardener? And why had he stayed? But the calm in his voice, the words that he said, soon let Mary know she had nothing to dread. Dear Mary, it's me. It's Jesus, your friend. My story's just starting. This wasn't the end. His eyes, how they twinkled, his smile so bright, Mary knew in a moment. But could she be right? She gasped in surprise and cried, Jesus, it's you. You came back to life. Your promise came true. Jesus nodded and said, But there's no time to lose. You must tell the disciples, Go, spread the good news. So she jumped to her feet, and away Mary went. She'd tell a story, a tale, heaven sent. She ran without stopping and called through the door. Disciples, you've never heard this news before. Now Peter, now James, now Thomas, now John. I went to the cave. Jesus' body was gone, but he called me by name. He's alive. It is true. It's a miracle only our great God could do. Then the trees seemed to dance, birds started to sing, all attention, all creation joined in to worship the king. He's alive, he's alive, the rocks cried in praise. The whole earth rejoiced on this day of all days.
When later that night, Mary knelt down to pray, she thought about all that had happened that day, and the stars heard her whisper through soft evening light, Happy Easter to all, and to all a good night. I invite you now to join me in a repeating prayer. I'll say the words first and invite you to say them after me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always being with us. Even when we don't see you. Help us to look for you everywhere. Amen. And I invite you now to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The United Church celebrates an open table that all are invited to share and receive in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Children who wish are invited to proceed directly to Sunday School with Santia during the singing of our communion hymn, or children can remain in the sanctuary and take part in the receiving of communion according to your family's wishes. And enjoy Sunday school with Sanskia following communion. Our communion hymn is Voices United 480, Let Us Break Bread Together. to this table, to the table of Jesus. We all belong. All are needed. No one is denied. As we prepare to share in this sacrament, we come together in person and virtually, a community gathered in fellowship and prayer. Let us pray together, saying, Resurrecting God, Mary went to the garden, looking for you. Two thousand years later, we follow in her footsteps. We seek after you, hungry for a garden moment, where we might hear you say your name or feel you in our midst. So before the alleluias begin, we empty our pockets of our prayers and remember where we've been. With gratitude, 
We recall Maundy Thursday. We are grateful for the tables we gather around, for the friends that feel like family, for this church which acts as our band of disciples. We hold on to the reminders of Jesus watching people's feet and trust that that same love extends to us. With sorrow, we recall Good Friday. We grieve the depths of cruelty woven into that day, a cruelty so many that this hurting world know. So for those who are still caught in grief and loss, and those whose days have turned to night, relieve them of their suffering. Find them in the crowd. Wipe their tears. Hold their grief for them and point them towards peace. With hope, we enter into this Easter morning. We find ourselves face to face with your good news. Thank you for giving us reason to hope. Thank you for the sunrise after a long night, the healing of bones and hearts, for laughter that is contagious, and for the joy felt in community. Tether every gratitude and joy in our life back to you. And now, as we come to the table, just as Mary came to the tomb, we ask that every stage of our seeking you would be near to us. Pour out a double portion of your spirit on this bread and cup that we might see you as clearly as Mary did. And may this meal nourish us to build your kingdom here. Amen. Jesus sat with his friends at a table together. He took bread and broke it, offering thanks, saying, Take eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and gave it offering thanks saying take drink this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for all people do this in remembrance of me take this food O oh god living savior Nourish it, pour your spirit upon it, for in it lies new life. Take our drink, our grapes, fruit of the vine living Christ, who is our true vine, that we are the branches. Bless all to refresh and renew us, body, mind, and spirit. In all is new hope. Take this table, risen Savior, where you welcome, bless, and value each beloved child. Remind us always that there is room for all and that we are all loved. Hear Jesus saying your name in love. Hear Jesus calling your name and offering his words of, I love you. Take this community, infuse it, O oh God, with a fresh spirit, free to dance with the dawn. <laughs> we offer our praise of gratitude and thanks. Alleluia, holy, holy God, breathing, living, <coughs> resurrected Savior, peacemaking, truth-giving, world-changing, receive us as we share in this meal. Pour your spirit on these elements and on us. May we experience your spirit now. In Jesus' name, amen. Take, eat, Christ's body given for you, the body of the resurrected Lord, the bread of life. Take, drink, 
The cup is the new covenant in Christ's blood shed for all people. The cup of blessing given for you. Do this in remembrance of our risen Lord, the fruit. Together, let's pray. We seek after you everywhere, God. We look for you in the mirror, in strangers, in sunrises, mountaintops, in the laughter of children, in meals shared together. We look for you on the city streets, in hospital rooms, in jail cells, in poetry, in hymn melodies, we can find you everywhere. Sometimes the seeking is hard, but then at other times we come to this table and all are fed, all are welcomed. There is room for everyone. No one is turned away. No one is made to feel unworthy. In these moments, we see you clearly. So thank you for meeting us in our seeking. Please don't stop seeking us. Grateful, we pray. Amen. It is time to sing again as we sing together. Hey now, singing hallelujah.
turn now to the scripture from that first Easter morning. Clarissa is reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. And Clarissa is reading from the New International Version. The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. He still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you were looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabomi, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and said instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Offered as wisdom for the journey. And I invite us now to receive this ministry of music as the choir offers its anthem in this morning on Easter Day.
Thank you, choir. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable to you, O God, of our understanding. Holy One, show us the unexpected. Bring us to your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Mary wept, standing in the garden, soft earth under her feet. Sun still tucked away, sleeping under the horizon. The other disciples left, but Mary stayed. Mary wept, shoulders shaking, tears running down her face. She said, they have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. But here is what Easter taught me. If you think you've lost God, if it feels like heaven has slipped through the cracks, and if you feel like the night will never end, then know that there is no hide-and-seek with the divine. It doesn't end. You will be found. Stay still. Keep breathing. God is closer than you think. These words from Sanctified Arts, Sarah Speed, bring us our own Alleluia. Only each one of us can know our story and the ways that we feel lost. Jesus stands with you, perhaps being mistaken as a gardener or other form, but hear your own name on his lips, offering you his message of love. Hear his words, I love you. And hear his commandment to love one another. It would have been easy on that Easter morning for Jesus to roll away the stone, walk into the city center, and declare that death had not won. Instead, Jesus waited. Jesus waited in the garden. He waited for the people who needed him most. He waited. For Mary. He called her by name. He stopped her crying. He gave her a reason to hope. God's love for you is personal, specific. Seek your truth. God's love will win. That love conquers even death. The God you seek will meet you in the garden on your hardest days. God invites us all to the table of love and forgiveness, of acceptance, and the promise that can heal your most painful places and your most wretched experiences. When Mary finds the tomb empty, she stands weeping, vacant, feeling alone. It seems that Jesus then mysteriously appears unnoticed before, appears as the gardener, asks her, why? Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And in that haze of grief, Mary can only see what is right before her, or in this case, what is not before her. It is only when Jesus calls her by name that that veil is lifted. She beholds the resurrected Christ. On this Easter morning, who, what are you looking for? Why have you come to the tomb? What kind of Jesus are you looking for? Who do you 
see? Who do you see in the living Christ? What veils need to be lifted? How will you notice and invite God's presence? Whatever your story, this is a morning of new hope, of new possibility for healing and resilience. You might be experiencing or just recalling times when you felt so lost. Maybe even so right now. Feeling so lost that you can't imagine this unexpected gift of God. Keys, glasses, cell phones, wallet, purse. These not only share the common quality that they are all part of our personal effects, they are also things that people often lose. Perhaps you've been busy shopping this week and came out to the parking lot at a complete loss as to where your vehicle is. Perhaps you've seen someone and you know you know their name, but at that exact moment when you need it, their name is lost to you. You walked into a room and completely lost what it was you were looking for. You've looked and looked and looked, but something important has vanished, become some great mystery, and you know you've searched everywhere. What have you lost this week, found this week? What are you seeking? If you're an adult with young children about, you know of those world-ending cries of anguish when a favorite soother, stuffy, or blanket is misplaced or forgotten. You may have even resorted to buying duplicates in rotation to keep it on the just-in-case list. We have experienced as children and possibilities as parents the laments of, I can't find, and of course, they looked everywhere, and yet the parent seems to have the powers of making the invisible visible, walking right to the spot, and ta-da, the lost is found. In our 20s, we're less likely to make a big deal of something we've lost, like, oh, where are those keys? But if your decades are increasing, that can put a whole different spin on it. Suddenly, we're wondering, are there issues? We utter phrases like senior moments in defense or fear. That, however, family of faith is ageism. We all lose things. Culture and society keeps conditioning us to attach a whole lot of extra meanings to the things that we forget and get lost. We can experience this same sort of challenge in our faith expression. It's so much easier to hold on to that feeling of being lost. That's what sticks in our head. And we can sometimes let go of all those celebrations of being found. No matter how mad or upset we do get when something is lost, and no matter what our negative self-talk that we find ourselves berating ourselves, like, we don't have time for this. Our inner reality is that there is some celebration within us, a little joy, after we've about given up often, for that lost item that is found. So why not with our faith and sense of spirituality? If it's lost, let it be found. It is that hope of being found 
That trust that Mary offers in the unexpected revelation of being found and known by Jesus. We've all been someone's hero or heroine, some figure that has, for example, found the toddler's beloved teddy. Joy, relief, all rolled into one. That's our spiritual experience, that joy. Mary stayed, she waited, sure. She was upset, overcome with loss and hurt, pain and grief, fear of what was going to happen next, the terrible uncertainty. She was filled with anguish as she was looking for Jesus. How many times has love, opportunity, gratitude, noticing right in our face been there and we've mistaken it? Or in the face of those losses and unexpected, we can reach out like the faith of a mustard seed that's like a small speck. Let go of the fear. Let go of that uncertainty and just create space. The sacred space of a pause, of a breath, a time to calm down, to get real perspective. We invite love to be, our hearts to be warmed. We can choose to be negative or positive in our outlook. We can judge and fall into words and actions that don't serve us. Or we can turn to ways of love that invite us to deeper gratitude and connection. What once was lost is found. We are held in God's loving embrace. So come, come whether you are dancing for joy or as we met Mary, still feeling lost. Come with your questions. You have shown up today. Hear your very name on Jesus' lips offering you his message of love. Hear Jesus' words, I love you. Love one another. It is everything. Alleluia and Amen. <laughs> so much so that he thought it was indigestion. And he was very adamant that he planned to be in the pulpit this morning. But he is remaining in hospital. And his daughter Beatrice was already planning to join him. The word last night was that we we're unsure if Tristan was going to fly in. If so, he was going to fly into Halifax and travel with Beatrice today to be with them. They were in St. John's at the time, so they were very close to the hospital. Linda said the community of faith is very much there, present, offering their willingness to help a retired member of the 
clergy who's part of the congregation will be taking Easter services this morning at Trent's church so he can rest and not be worrying about that. But they have asked for prayers throughout our community of faith. Linda has not yet been able to get hold of all the siblings and family, so she's asking us not to put that request out on social media, but knowing that we will continue to hold Trent, Linda, and family in prayer. He expects to be out of hospital in the next couple of days. So please hold him in prayer. Let us pray. Rabboni, teacher, we have spent this Lent season seeking. If we have chosen to give things up, to let go of that which no longer serves us, or taken up intentions to add to our lives, let all bring us closer to you. We wrestle with so many questions. We know how messy things can be our emptiness and confusion, when we try to take control of circumstances that are beyond our control. In our faith journey, we challenge and confront ourselves, as with ageism, berating ourselves, sometimes blaming, hardening our own hearts to forgiveness. We turn over every rock, we shine a light in every dusty corner. We open the blinds. We wrestle with truth. We seek after you. So on this Easter morning, O oh God, move through this room until the walls echo with the sounds of our alleluias. Roll back the stones that prevent us from drawing closer to you, God of our hearts. Receive, O oh God, the joys we bring, the concerns we bring, the forgiveness we seek, the love we hope for. We lift up especially, O oh God, today, Trent and his family. We lift up all those who are hurting grieving, alone, those on the margins or outsiders in any way. We ask of God for the safety and well-being of those that are gathering in celebrations this weekend, and we trust you to be present, to share that love in the offering of healing and forgiveness wherever it is needed. Say our names, O oh God. Awaken us to your presence in our midst. We are here. We are listening. We are seeking after you. Alleluia and Amen. We believe in Jesus who calls us by name and asks, who are you looking for? So we look for justice, for mercy, for God in our midst. As we look, we sing, joyful, joyful, we adore you. Voices United 232 in your hymn books and on the screen.
justice. Seek out the hungry. Seek the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful. Seek the faithful. Seek God in each of us. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for. In the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us, go now in peace. God bless you, and amen. Yes, yes, yes.